Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Eden Full. Thanks so much for having me here. Um, I want to talk to you today about my project, uh, which is called the Sun Saluter. And thank you. And basically, um, this lesson that I've learned in the work that I've been doing over the past uh, couple of years is that when you're trying to design a solution and deploy it in the world, it doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be something that works. So for me, um, over the past couple of years, I've been developing a device that rotates solar panels without using electricity. And the reason you want to actually do this is because if you point the solar panels so that they're following the sun throughout the entire day, it gives you up to 40% more electricity. And we do this while providing clean water, which I'll explain in a bit. And so I've been really into um, solar panels and tinkering with things ever since I was a little kid. And my first experiment actually started out um, where I uh, built a, sol a desktop solar car. And I tried to make it go from one end of my house to the other end. And one of my frustrations was that I would charge the solar, uh, I would use the solar panel to charge the battery of the car. But then I was noticing it wasn't really going all the way. And you know, I wanted to do this in like two minute intervals so that I could do races. But I was no noticing that this wasn't working. So I went online and I tried to research different ways that you can optimize solar panels. And the first thing that came up was this really complicated thing. And I was like 10 at the time. And I was like, what? I, I, I'm, there's no way I'm going to be able to understand how to do this. So. You know, I feel like over the years, I cultivated my interest in solar, and I built this prototype um, a few years later uh, when I was doing a science fair project. Um, and how it works is I you know, pretty much built it with materials that I found at Home Depot, and um, I used this concept called bimetallic coils. And essentially, there are two types of metal that are welded together. There's steel and aluminum. And when you wind them in a coil like that, and you have different coils of different thicknesses um, and different lengths, basically, you can control this rotation of the solar panel by, um, you know, by having these coils set at different parts um, to, throughout the entire day. And I thought this was you know, a really cool idea. And as far as I had known, no one else had come up with it. And um, you know, I was really determined to, to see if I could actually have it work in the real world. And a profound moment for me was when I actually was at this international science fair, and the girl sitting next to me was from Indonesia. And she was like, oh, this would actually be a really great idea to deploy in the developing world. And so for me, something that was like a pet project, something that I've been working on for fun for the past you know, couple years of my life, um, I feel like a light bulb went off for me. And I decided, well, I actually want to deploy this and see what happens. So this was our very first Sun Saluter deployment in uh, a couple years ago. And I had actually gone to college, and I had the chance to work with a professor. Um, and basically, he gave me this opportunity to go to Kenya and actually deploy the Sun Saluter. And you know, I thought this was uh, a really good opportunity because Kenya is actually right on the equator, which means you get a lot of sunlight throughout the entire year. Um, you get a lot of really good exposure. And it was a good chance to collect data and actually test out, you know, does rotating your solar panels actually work? Is it possible to do this without electricity and in a simple enough way that you know, someone like me when I was 10 would be able to build something like this? And you know, someone in a village who hasn't had a formal education would also be able to do this as well. And so, you know, I, I had a lot of work. Um, I had a lot of work to do, and I collaborated with the villagers in the village called Mpala to make this happen. As you can see, there are a lot of guys there doing heavy lifting for me, um, and it was a good opportunity to work with them and be like, are these parts that I've designed available locally? Um, are these parts that um, you know I'm using right here? Do you think that's going to work in the long term? And you know, these are people who obviously have a lot of cultural expertise and an understanding of what they need and they want. And one very important thing that I learned was that 
they don't actually need to have you know, an inverter. They don't need AC electricity. A lot of these villagers are still trying to charge you know, one cell phone that they have, like a really old school Nokia cell phone, or they're trying to you know, power a radio or a lantern. So they're not quite there yet. And I feel like when I came here with a lot of my preconceived notions of what the Sun Salubre would be for, a lot, of what I, a lot of my expectations actually had to change. So a, a really important story that uh, I want to tell you is when I was actually in Kenya, I met a woman who had three solar lanterns. And she showed me how the first solar lantern that she had, she would give to her kids so they could study at night. And then the second solar lantern, she would give to her husband so he could do whatever he wanted. And the third one, she would keep for herself so that she could do chores. And you know, she, she was telling me how the solar panel she had could charge two, two and a half of the solar lanterns really well. And then if it was like kind of cloudy, you would almost get no charge on the third lantern. And so I was like, well, actually, this is a really easy problem that I can help you solve. Let me go into the city, let me get some supplies, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to build you a sun saluter. And so I went into the city, I got my supplies, and then I came back, and I couldn't find her anymore. And so I, I asked her neighbor, um, where is she? I'm looking for her. And her neighbor was like, she actually, um, last night, went out um, into the dark. I guess her lantern wasn't working. And she was collecting firewood. And she got trampled by a water buffalo. And so I feel like, for me, this was a, a really big moment where something that was just my own personal interest all of a sudden led to this realization that, you know, not having electricity is a matter of life or death for some of these people. And I'm in a position where if I deploy enough sun saluters, maybe I can stop something like this from happening. And so I had a chance to deploy the, our first pilot project for the sun saluter with the metal design um, in Kenya, and you know, had a chance to do it with a neighboring family. And everyone was really understanding and gave me a lot of great feedback. Um, one of the things that I actually learned also was that there are a lot of children in the village. So, um, you know, they play with it, they'll, they'll play with the sun saluter, it's something they've never seen before. The men and the women are all busy working during the day. So I've got to make sure that if I'm leaving a solar panel lying around in a village, it's got to be pretty childproof. And one thing that I've really realized is that I care a lot about inventing but I also care about sharing it with people. It's no fun to just build something in my, you know, in my basement and you know, not have it be useful for anyone. So I've realized that from this trip, I really wanted to work in the field of appropriate technology. And, but I thought to myself, what's an even simpler way to rotate a solar panel? The villagers were telling me that the existing design that I'd created with these bimetallic coils, look, it was like really cool and all. It's great that you're trying to help us, but we don't understand how this works. If you leave this with us and expect us to be able to maintain this for the next five, 10 years, you're probably going to be disappointed. And so that's why I feel like I thought to myself, what, what are some ways that I can simplify the, so the solar panel rotation even further? One thing that I was observing while I was there was that at around 5 o'clock in the morning, a lot of the villagers will go into, you know, they'll go pump water or at, the, at the well, or they're going to go to a river and they're going to scoop up some water in their jerry cans. And then they bring these jerry cans back to their house and just leave them, like, lying on the floor. And then it, it, it's, the thought occurred to me, why not use the water that's just lying around, not being used, and it might even be dirty water, and find a way to do something useful with it? So this is how the sun saluter, the current design, now works. At around 5 o'clock in the morning, you're going to get your water in your jerry can. Then around 7 o'clock in the morning, you're going to pour the water from that jerry can into one side of the solar panel, the east side, so that your solar panel is going to face east. And then it's, and then that volume of water is going to slowly leak throughout the entire day. And of course, the trick behind the sun saluter is getting the flow rate to be consistent throughout the whole day while the volume is changing. And that's uh, part of the, our design. And so as this dirty water is flowing through the system, it's going to flow through a, a really basic ceramic or biosand water filter, whatever our partners are working with. And then it's going to become clean water that you can pretty much, anytime you want throughout the whole day, access that water. 
And so as this, you know, as this weight imbalance is gradually occurring throughout the day, the trick is to match the flow rate of the water with the rate at which the sun is moving across the sky. And this will give you clean water and more electricity as this kind of seesaw sun saluter rotation is happening. And so for, um, we decided that we wanted to test this out. But for those of you who are curious, what does 40% more electricity mean when you rotate your solar panel? It means that you can get one extra lantern charged, or you know, two extra cell phones, or a, a whole extra 12 volt battery sometimes, and four liters of clean water every day. And that's a substantial amount of electricity when these people aren't dealing with any other resources. So we had a chance to test out our new sun saluter technology in Tanzania. And the reception was really, really different. People were excited about this. We just set it up on the side of the road because we were curious what people were going to think. And people, actually random strangers stopped by and were thinking like, oh, this is a really cool idea. How does it work? And when I explained it to them, and I explained that the intention is to kind of kill two birds with one stone here, where you get clean water and more electricity at the same time, they were like, oh, this is really interesting. Where do I buy one? And the awkward part was having to tell them that we weren't for sale yet. And so it was really interesting to also have a chance to deploy this in, in Uganda as well, where we did it with a formal partner. And the nice thing about having a track record and having a chance to deploy previous projects was it gave us an opportunity to build a reputation and then work with, uh, in, in Uganda, we worked with a maternity clinic that obviously um, having clean water was a really important issue. And it was just interesting to see how receptive people all were. And so goals for the next year are um, to deploy 200 units at least now that we've had this technology proven out in the world. And it turns out it works a lot better than the old one. And the intention is to impact at least 15,000 villagers. And we're hoping we can do this by being able to set up a local sun saluter manufacturing facility in the countries that we're working in so that we don't have to deal with shipping costs. And so one thing that I want to leave you with is that it just has to work, right? It doesn't matter if you created this beautiful innovation that you can patent, but if it doesn't work in the real world where that really has to count, then it's not like you invented anything at all. But I think one thing that I've really learned is I can't stay married to one idea. I have to continue to be innovative. I have to meet the needs of the end users. And you know that's the only way that my passion is ever going to make a difference in the world. Thank you.